These tiny hatchlings are 85 magnificent, critically endangered hawksbill turtles on their way to start their lives in the ocean. Like all turtle species, their populations have fallen dramatically due to hunting, egg collecting, and habitat loss. But thanks to the hard work of conservationists in Singapore, there are a few more turtles swimming around in our oceans. I'm Jada Elcock, and this is your first chance to see. We'll be hearing from Tammy Lim, who is Assistant Manager in Environmental Management at Sentosa Development Corporation, in just a minute to find out more about these little guys. But first, here's everything you need to know about the hawksbill turtle. Hawksbill turtles live in tropical and subtropical oceans around the world, and they get their name because their bill looks like, you guessed it, a hawk's beak. Oh, and they're old, like truly ancient. Sea turtles were cruising the oceans along with the dinosaurs. But unlike the dinosaurs, they've managed to survive another 100 million years. Hawksbill turtles are also incredibly important to the health of coral reefs where they mostly live. Why is that, I hear you ask? Well, because they help keep the reefs clear of sponges, which in turn helps the reef grow and lets smaller fish find food. SpongeBob's not allowed here. So, where you have turtles, you have happy reefs. Hawksbill turtles are also excellent navigators. A female hawksbill turtle will actually return to the same beach that she hatched at to lay her own eggs over 10 years later. And each female can lay up to 160 eggs three times a year in an underground nest. But here's a cool fact. The temperature in the nest actually affects whether the turtles will be male or female. When the temperature in the nest is warmer, it produces more females. When the temperature in the nest is cooler, it produces more males. And that's how you get hot chicks and cool dudes. Temperature dependent sex determination, we love to see it. But sadly, hawksbill turtles are critically endangered due to hunting for their shells, egg collection, loss of nesting beaches, and pollution. That is why protecting them in their nests is so important. And that is exactly what Tammy and the team do. Let's hear from her now. So I work on Sentosa Island here in Singapore. And I'm part of the environmental management team, which basically takes care of the nature and wildlife here on Sentosa Island. So hawksbill turtles nest on Sentosa Beach, don't they? And you try to protect their nests, isn't that right? We try to help it along its way. Once we find a nest, we actually build a home around it to kind of protect the nest from natural predators such as monitor lizards or ghost crabs. So it's still open to all the natural environment. If it rains, it gets the rain. If there's sunshine, it gets the sunshine. So it doesn't really affect the development, but it does keep the predators out. How do you know that a turtle has nested? So they do make a certain kind of tracks when they come ashore. These turtles are really smart. You know, when the mother comes ashore to nest, they don't just dig in one spot. They might actually dig in several spots to throw predators off the path and distract them from where the actual nest is. So quite a challenge for us to find the actual spot. The mother doesn't hang around, does she? The mothers, after they have laid their eggs, they will go back into the sea. They don't provide any maternal care whatsoever. And that's where we come in to help the mother um, essentially take care and protect the nest during the incubation period. Um, it typically takes about 55 to 60 days. Are you able to monitor the eggs while they're under the sand? So we do check the outside just to make sure that there's no disturbance, no signs of predators. But what we do do is that we will put a little equipment into the nest just to keep track of the temperature in the nest. How long does it take hawksbill turtle eggs to hatch? Hatchlings do not emerge immediately, so they might still spend a couple of days in the nest itself and they will still have its yolk sac attached to its belly and they will start to slowly absorb that yolk sac and start to stretch out and straighten out its shell in preparation to emerge from the nest. And they'll wait for all their siblings or most of their siblings to have hatched before they emerge together. Because if it's just one hatchling trying to climb its way out, it's going to be a lot of hard work. When they get up to the surface, they face predators. And when all of them emerge together, um, it's safety in numbers. So the ones at the top will kind of dig their way up to the surface and the ones at the bottom will compact the sand beneath them so that it gives them an added lift to make sure that everybody gets out of the nest safely. How do you release them into the water? We will um, check the hatchlings to make sure that they have developed well, to make sure that the shell has actually um, developed. We will also measure them, weigh them, we will release them 
some way from the water's edge to allow them to crawl their way to the sea. What they are also doing is that they are imprinting on the beach so they will know where to come back to when it's time for them to lay their own eggs. Where do the little turtles go next? They make this swimming frenzy out into the sea to try and get as far out as possible to avoid all the predators that's in the shallow waters. In the next few years, it's what scientists term the lost years because not much is really known about what happened to the young turtles during this period of time until they get slightly older and they gather to um, mate and nest. That's when people tend to be able to record them more easily. Wow, what an amazing and rare sight, and how brilliantly Tammy and the team took care of those little turtles. Thanks for joining me, and let's take a look at those hatchlings starting their life at sea one more time.